Hi again. So now for some more complex difference of two squares examples. Um, you'll see up here I've got a factorise and I've got a term squared subtract another term. And so I'm going to have a little look. I'm going to see if I can rewrite this in terms of two squares. Now this first bit is already in terms of two squares. So I'm going to leave that like this. And 121 is 11 squared. So now I'm going to use my same rule. I'm going to open up some brackets. Now, difference of two squares says whatever is in the first square goes at the beginning. So x plus 2, x plus 2. Whatever is in the second square goes at the end. And then I just need an add and I need a subtract. Now it's nearly done, but you'll notice that we've got two numbers in here, so we can simplify that a little bit more. So x plus 2 plus 11 is plus 13. x plus 2 take 11 is x take 9. So we've started off with something that's two squares and we've ended up with your two factors. This next example is the one that just does my head in, okay? It doesn't seem to make any sense, but this is actually really useful a little bit later down the track when we're working on quadratics. So that's why we're having a look at it right now. So imagine we're factorising something along the lines of this. Um, x squared subtract 7. Now, we know that 7 isn't actually a square number, so it's a bit of a strange thing to ask you to do it using different of squares. But is there a way we can write 7 as a square, as a number multiplied by itself? Okay, and you can have, have a little think about that for a moment. What times itself equals 7? Well, the square root of 7 multiplied by itself equals 7. So if I can write this in terms of something squared take something squared, then I can use the difference of squares rule or method to factorise it. So x in the front, root 7 in the back, and then plus and take. Now that's really kind of crazy. So x plus root 7 times x take root 7 are the factors of x squared subtract 7. So basically you can use this method for anything. We don't always want to use this method, but if you are asked to do it, that's how it's done. Now, what do you need to do? Back to exercise 7.4. You've now got the skills to actually apply yourself to almost all the questions. So, so far you should have done 1, 2, 3 and 4. Now, I'd like you to work on 5, 7, 8, 13, 14... And you can have a go at the problem solving ones if you like, which are 18 and 19. Okay, that's going to take you a while. It'll probably take you to the end of the class. Good luck with it. If you need any extra help, look at the MathQuest worked examples or revisit any of the videos.